Judy Han, one of Street Fighter's most popular characters and an icon to the fighting game community. Judy is known and talked about mainly due to some of her more interesting features, so to speak. But looking beyond all that, who is Judy? Why is she the way that she is? And how did she end up the way that she did? Judy has one of the most tragic backstories within the Street Fighter lore, and delving into her past, it's not hard to see why she turned out the way that she did. But what if I told you that she can be brought back to the light, that good is still within her, and that a redemption arc could potentially be around the corner? But before we can discuss that, we need to start from the very beginning. We are going to take a look at Judy's entire storyline within the Street Fighter lore and the relationships she has with several of its characters and what kind of impact they have left on Judy. So who is Judy Han? Judy was born and raised in South Korea. She had two loving parents that she had also valued, loved, respected, and cared for. Judy was a preeminent practitioner of Taekwondo. However, her father was a lawyer in charge of prosecuting organized crime operations. She described her father as wielding justice like a blade, slaying evildoers left and right. He was respected by his entire country, Judy included. Judy's father was loving but also very stern and had wished for Judy to sharpen her Taekwondo skills. Judy did just as she was told, and by age 15, she was not only at the top of her class, but she was also winning tournament after tournament. Meanwhile, she was also a grade A student on paper, so and so that her family described her as the beautiful genius. Judy was happy. In fact, she was more than happy. However, unbeknownst to her, a dark shadow would be looming over her and her family. The crime organization, Shadowloo. Judy's father was on his biggest case yet. Unsurprisingly, he once again had another organization's back against a corner. However, what he wasn't prepared for was them striking back. Judy and her parents were stopped by what seemed to be average criminals attempting to mug the rich. This, however, was not the case. And Judy would soon come to realize that the scenario she and her parents were in was a living nightmare. The criminals revealed themselves to be agents of Shadowloo, and they made their intentions clear right from the get-go. Their leader, M. Bison, had given orders to dispose of the Han family, as Bison couldn't afford his plans of world domination fall into disarray. The Hans were kidnapped and also separated. Judy and her mother were held hostage while her father was taken in for interrogation. Shadowloo's demands were simple. Give the agents all the necessary info about the case and to simply stop the investigation on their organization. Despite her father's best efforts, Judy's mother was murdered while Judy being left gravely wounded, losing her left eye, being seemingly left for dead, her father also being murdered shortly after. Judy surviving was nothing but a miracle, but to her was a nightmare. With her family gone and being left half blind for the first time in her life, Judy was alone. She had lost everything that had ever mattered to her. Judy was now broken. It's unknown what she had done during the 10 years after the events that had transpired with Shadowloo, but what we do know is how it changed Judy. She became angry, wicked, heartless, psychotic, unhinged. Judy's life had spiraled out of control as she was blinded by thoughts of revenge against Bison. She had one goal, and one goal only. Kill Bison and burn his organization to the ground. Eventually, Judy joined the Shadowloo Intimidation Network, SIN for short. SIN was the weapons division of Shadowloo that had staged an uprising for power against Shadowloo and Bison, led by Seth, the corporation's CEO. Due to Judy's disability of being half-blind, Seth had instructed that Judy would be the operative to be equipped with the Feng Shui engine, a miniaturized version of the Tandon engine. Despite the sheer amount of uncomfort of the operation, Judy had remained calm, eerily calm which was noted by those implanting the Feng Shui engine during the operation. What this tells us about Judy is that during those 10 years, she had become hardened. 
Not only that, but what we also know is that Judy loves to inflict pain onto others. But while subtle, this tiny bit of info may actually tell us that Judy is not only used to pain, and enduring worse, may actually enjoy inflicting pain on herself. With her eyesight finally restored, Seth tasks Judy with her first mission, that being to test out the Feng Shui engine. She sets out to a public area to take out operatives while disposing them effortlessly one by one. However, little did Judy know that she would meet two people that would have a significant impact on her, one that would carry on for years. Chun Li, an Interpol officer, was called to the scene to defeat Judy and arrest her. Alongside her was Cammy and Guile, two fellow colleagues and very close friends. The trio had arrived on the scene to nothing but a massacre. Countless bodies of fallen soldiers and innocent bystanders scattered about. The three agreed to split up and that's when Chun Li finally finds the one responsible for the massacre. We then see a child frantically shaking his unconscious mother in tears. Judy, however, completely ignores the child and his cries and shows little to no remorse for the child nor acknowledge the consequences of her actions. This is important. This shows exactly what kind of person Judy is at this point in her life. The death of her parents had led her to a path of darkness. Let's analyze what's happening here. I mentioned that Judy is showing no sort of empathy towards the child. However, she isn't even acknowledging him. It's like he isn't even there. Why is this? Does she not care? Well, it's because she doesn't. In Judy's mind, she lost everything. Unfairly. So why should she be the only one who does? This is Judy on her warpath. This scene here shows that she will stop at absolutely nothing in her conquest for revenge. Even if that means that there are casualties along the way. She's become a being of chaos. Judy will never forget what Bison took from her. She was robbed of her parents, her life. The most important things in her life are gone, and there was nothing she could do about it. It's these intrusive thoughts that constantly remind her, that torture her, that drag her further into the abyss that she cannot escape. All of this is what fuels her rage and turns her against the world. Judy wanted to see the world burn. She wanted to see everyone suffer just as she has, but nobody more than Bison. She wants him dead. But before seeing so, Judy wants to see that everything he's worked for come crashing down. Judy wants revenge. It's this revenge that she strives for that keeps her going. It's what's making her fall more and more into madness. Judy is at a point of no return. And good night. Hold it right there! I'm done here. You can start cleaning up. Enough! Who are you? That's none of your business, sweetie. Although, you could beat it out of me. Well, the eye is still just a prototype. I don't want to waste its power on someone like you. Hmm. You might be worth my time after all. Innocent lives you've destroyed. Give me a break, sweetie. There's no such thing as innocent. It must suck to be so stupid. Shut up! I just get these urges. <laughs>
just when we were starting to have some fun, huh? Guess you get to live for now. We'll do this later. Suddenly! Who was that? Is she okay? She needs a doctor. Cammy, Chumley. There's a woman out there with a child. Right, I'll take care of it. This here is a perfect example of the current state that Judy is in. She only met Chun Li moments ago and is willing to kill her without remorse. If it weren't for the Feng Shui engine prototype malfunctioning, Judy would have taken Chun Li out without a second thought. There's a lot of information given to us within this scene. It shows us what Judy is not only capable of, but just how far she's willing to go to achieve her goals. So now, I want to skip ahead to the fight Judy later has with Guile. This is important. During their confrontation, Judy questions both Guile and Cammy on the whereabouts of Chun-Li. Judy laughs at the thought of her possibly being dead, but her laugh quickly turns into a maniacal one. The thought of their friend possibly being dead because of her is an idea that Judy gets her enjoyment off of. This shows just how psychotic she currently is as a human being. That Chinese chick you brought with you last time. Oh, did she die on you? <laughs> that hurt. That hurt. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. You guys sure know how to keep a girl entertained. See ya! I want to talk about this scene here especially, as this shows Judy's unstable side. What we learn here is that Judy hates losing. She cannot stand the possibility, let alone the idea, of being bested. But there's actually more here. While intelligent, Judy is the kind of person to have a mental breakdown when things don't go her way. We see this with the way that she reacts to Guile's attack and snaps while screaming that she'll kill him. What's interesting about this is that Guile didn't really seem to do any sort of major damage to Judy. While yes, we know that he hurt her of course, it just seemed like a minor inconvenience. But the way she acts to something so small that Judy herself had instigated and that she's even shocked that she was successfully caught off guard, that is what Judy is focused on and is furious about. One of the things we learned about Judy leading up to this confrontation is that Judy fights purely for the thrill of the battle. In her mind, she's having fun and is only here to have fun. She doesn't take her fights as seriously as she should, therefore, she's essentially become full of herself and is cocky. So when Guile humbled Judy in that moment, she despises that. Again, she hates losing. Cammy eventually catches up to Judy and the both of them have one last fight. But unfortunately for Cammy, Judy gets away. Later, we see Seth commend Judy on her mission being a success while also promising to give the Feng Shui engine some new advancements. After her call with Seth, Judy speaks to herself about her excitement of Shadaloo and SIN finally going against each other. <laughs> Something fun is on the horizon. I can just feel it. Shadaloo and SIN are gonna face off. I can't wait for the sparks to fly. It's gonna be a bloodbath. And a bloodbath is what I came to see. What's important about this scene is that this taps into why Judy is working with Seth to begin with, and what her intentions really are. 
Judy is using Seth as a pawn in her conquest against Bison and Shadaloo. By helping Seth, Judy is guaranteeing a war between the two tyrants which will help her in the long run of taking over. Fast forward to the main events of Street Fighter 4, we see Judy on the phone talking to Seth. Judy goes on about how her latest missions have gotten stale. Judy promises to Seth that if he doesn't give her something worth her while, she'll set off and do her own thing. Seth then gives Judy the details about the tournament that he was hosting, and with no rules specifically attached, it piques Judy's interest and she agrees to join the tournament while maniacally laughing. Judy uses the tournament as an opportunity to enact her plan of betraying Seth and taking down Bison. However, during the tournament, Bison unexpectedly shows up as Judy's next opponent. For Judy, this is more of a surprise to her as she wouldn't expect a villain such as Bison to do the dirty work himself. Judy even reveals here that she had initially planned on saving Bison for last and was planning on winning the tournament and destroying SIN first. Oh man, I was really planning on saving the main course for last. <laughs> Whatever. I'll just eat you up, bones and all. The two fight and Judy comes out on top and making her way to Seth. Meanwhile, Bison himself had gotten a head start and fought Seth himself, defeating him. Before giving Seth the killing blow, however, Judy arrives and challenges Bison once more. Bison takes interest in Judy's feng shui engine and attempts to take the eye for himself. It's unclear who ends up winning this fight, but both Judy and Bison make it out alive with Judy's feng shui engine still intact. Shortly after their fight, Judy is seen looming over Seth as he explains to Judy that he was aware of her betrayal the entire time of her following his orders. Judy, however, doesn't believe what Seth is telling her for a second and says to him that he shouldn't be full of himself. Judy then reveals to Seth her true intentions of pinning Seth and Bison against each other as she would take over behind both their backs. Not long after telling Seth her plan, she stomps into Seth's tandem engine, destroying it in the process. She then leaves Seth for dead and mentions that she'll need to find a new hobby with SIN now gone. Wow, guess I better find a new hobby. A couple years after the events of Street Fighter 4, we see Judy's story begin at the Shadowloo base fighting Bison once more. Bison once again mentions his interest in Judy's feng shui engine. However, this time, Bison succeeds in taking the eye by catching Judy by surprise and tearing the feng shui engine out of her. Before Judy would even have the chance to fight back, Bison then leaves, supposedly leaving Judy for dead. Judy, however, survives and returns to the SIN laboratory in search of the prototype of the Feng Shui Engine, known as the Feng Shui Engine Alpha. Judy retrieves the Feng Shui Engine Alpha and sets off. Later on, Judy is confronted unexpectedly by Colin. Colin reveals that she had given Judy a proposition, which Judy refuses as she prefers to work alone. However, this conversation is cut short as Balrog, one of Shadowloo's enforcers, confronts her. Balrog reveals that Shadowloo had intel on their potentially being previous SIN operatives in the area and expressing his disdain for his suspicions of it being Judy true. Their fight is then suddenly interrupted by Ed, another one of Shadowloo's enforcers, that he would be needed back at base. The two rush off, leaving a curious Judy about what was going Going on. Bison stealing the Feng Shui engine, Colin wanting Judy to join the Illuminati, and now Balrog sniffing old SIN operatives out? Judy then calls out to someone knowing that she's being watched. It turns out that C. Viper, a CIA agent who was previously working undercover as a spy to watch Shadowloo and learn what plans they've been up to, had been watching from the shadows the entire time. Judy taunts her, informing Sea Viper that she suspects with her and the CIA involved, she suspects that something is going on with Shadowloo something big, which Judy then questions her if this is indeed the case. Sea Viper, however, keeps what she knows classified and warns Judy of potential further involvement. Spider, the only reason you're not in jail is because you aren't the target. Keep interfering and I'll bring you in, and I doubt orange is your color. Keep that in mind. <laughs> oh, scary. Despite Sea Viper's warning, Judy makes for the Shadowloo base where she confronts Fung, Bison's right hand within Shadowloo. The two then fight with Judy coming out victorious. However, unfortunately for Judy, Fung wasn't as weak as she thought him to be and makes for her escape. 
Now having the intel she needs, Judy gets into contact with Colin and agrees to join the Illuminati to take down Bison and Shadaloo once and for all. How did you get this number? Who cares about that when you finally have my attention? You're saying you would like to accept our offer? Sure. I've made my down payment to join this party. Two times already. Sometime later, Judy arrives at the Illuminati's base. There, Colin is seen with two other newly recruited members, Nash and Rashid. Judy, however, doubting the potential of her new co-workers, challenges Rashid to a battle. Time to play! Let's talk about this. Remember earlier when I mentioned Judy purely fights for the thrill of the battle? We see more of that here. While yes, Judy is taking the opportunity of joining the Illuminati to enact her revenge on Bison, remember, she's here to have fun. It's part of Judy's twisted nature. In her mind, this is all a game to her. It's an itch she cannot scratch no matter how many times she tries. Judy is never satisfied. Colin then goes on to reveal the plans of Bison and Shadaloo and attempts to use the Black Moons to spread fear and despair, the source of his psycho power across the globe. Later on, we see Cammy, Ken, Chun-Li, and Laura facing off against DiCaprio, one of Bison's dolls and Cammy's sister. After their battle, the group is stopped by a few police officers. However, surprisingly to the group, Judy comes crashing in on a bike and offers Cammy a safe exit with her sister, which to Chun-Li's surprise, Cammy takes the offer. I think it's important to discuss Judy's mindset of murdering anybody. Throughout her story, she always seems to get excited at the idea of killing. We know that Judy holds a huge body count, but she seems to be really into the idea of killing her opponents, even if it's just for fun. This is once again having to do with trauma and her lust for revenge on Bison. Over the years, Judy's humanity had slowly been chipping away as she would lose herself more and more on her quest for revenge. Here, however, we see Judy attempting to get through to Cammy with the idea of her putting DiCaprio out of her misery. But the way she sees it, it's as if it's like a joke, laughing the entire time. But why is this? But why is this? Well, this actually may be Judy's coping mechanism. To her, the mindset she has is taking care of loved ones is simply put them out of their misery. Again, we know that Judy has killed many people, both innocent and guilty. However, we've never seen this. Judy suggesting that Cammy kill her sister, a loved one? Why is that? Let's discuss why Judy isn't seen as a people person. We know that at this point in time, she has little to no friends. This is due to PTSD. Judy loved her parents. Her entire world revolved around them, but they were taken from her. She was robbed. This is why she shuts herself out from everyone. Judy doesn't want to love again because of the fear inside of her that's constantly eating her away, that plants the idea in her head that if she starts to care for people again, that she'll end up losing them too. Judy is scared. That's all that she is. Scared. She wants to love again. She wants to open herself up, but she can't bring herself to it. Back to the story. We see that Vega had been following the girls and after a battle with Cammy, Vega comes out on top. Judy, however, doesn't stand for this and fights Vega and fends him off. This is a perfect example of Judy showing sympathy for the sisters. Judy wanted Cammy to kill DiCaprio, but she didn't. The reason to why she didn't was because of love. Judy learned an important lesson here. Cammy could have put DiCaprio out of her misery, but she chose not to. Knowing there was a chance to save her, Judy would have killed her if she was in that position because Judy would not have wanted to go through with a loved one being permanently in that kind of state. It would have been too much for Judy. So in her mind, just ripping the band-aid off would be the easier way to deal with it. But Cammy doesn't do that. Judy sees why Cammy doesn't kill DiCaprio. And for the first time in a very long time, she understands love again. A selfish act begets another, but a selfless one can also be contagious. Later on, we once again see Judy defending the sisters from Vega as she has a newfound respect for both sisters. After the defeat of Bison and Shadow Lou, Judy helps Cammy and DiCaprio escape the police and make for London. 
with the climax being at sea. This was considered a nightmare for both Judy and Cammy as a huge thunderstorm had them both pinned down. With DiCaprio asleep during the whole ordeal, Judy and Cammy had to rely on each other for survival. With Cammy knowing her way around a boat, she helps Judy directing her throughout the storm with the girls making it out alive. We then see both girls smiling at one another, showing that whatever hatred they had for one another was no more. Sometime after the events of the fall of Shadowloo, we see Judy infiltrate what seems to be the SIN laboratory. Judy had hijacked Doll Unit Zero and powers it on despite being warned not to as the unit is nowhere near ready for operation. However, Judy stores a mysterious item inside the unit and powers it on despite the warnings. To Judy's surprise, it turns out what she had installed into Doll Unit Zero was the memory of Seth. Seth malfunctions and the two fight. Unfortunately for Judy, she loses the fight and makes off, referring to Seth as another broken toy, leaving him to wreak havoc. This here shows Judy's careless side and how her stubbornness causes chaos even when she isn't deliberately doing so. Therefore, her own stubbornness is another one of her flaws. Years after the events of Street Fighter V, we finally get to the present day. Street Fighter VI finally shows us how Judy is now that Bison is no more. After everything that she fought for, after all she has done to make things right in her mind, had Judy finally found peace? What has she been up to? What we know is that Judy was finally happy. Why am I so freaking pissed off? I mean, ha, for real. God damn it! Judy was angry, lost, confused, depressed. She didn't get to enact the death blow herself. So to Judy, she never got the revenge she strived for. Judy was just burnt out. She was tired of everything. She didn't know what to do. So what did she do about it? Judy set off to find some sort of meaning in her life. During her travels across the globe, Judy learns of a new uprising, one that caught her attention immediately. Shadowloo was on the verge of coming back. Things may have been kept under wraps, but Judy discovered that JP was Shadowloo's head financial manager. With this information in mind, Judy remains in Naishal lurking in the shadows watching JP closely. Sometime later, while in China, Judy is watching Chun-Li from the shadows. Fortunately for Judy, Chun-Li notices and calls out to Judy to face her as Judy had anticipated. Judy warns Chun-Li that despite everything that they had done to take down Bison, a new threat was on the rise and that things were far from over. Despite the current situation with JP possibly bringing Shadowloo back, there is another reason as to why Judy was seeking out Chun-Li. Judy expresses that she was nervous that Chun-Li had lost her touch and that she's relieved that their rivalry is still alive as ever. Your concern is touching. Well, are we done here? Damn, what's your rush? Just thought I'd give you a little warning is all. If you think now the big bad's dead, this whole thing's over, think again. What exactly do you mean? If you really want to know, you're going to have to beat it out of me. Let's take a look back at Street Fighter V. If you fight Judy as the fortune teller Manat, upon victory, Manat mentions that she senses loneliness within Judy. We see that here. Judy struggles to find meaning in her life and clings on to the one thing she's always had, the thrill of the battle. Judy's reduced herself to the mindset that her only purpose left in life is her rivalry with Chun-Li. Sure, she had other rivalries in her past, but Chun-Li's was all that she had left. She's doing this because she's lonely. Judy doesn't know what to do with her life. During their battle, Chun-Li expresses hope that Judy can finally atone for all her wrongdoings, which Judy reluctantly mocks and shrugs off. After their battle, Judy gets away and is then later seen resting by the ocean side, reflecting on not only her past, but something that Chun-Li had mentioned to her during their battle. You too are one of Bison's victims. These were the words. They weren't just ordinary words. To Judy, this was her realization. Chun-Li had finally gotten through to Judy. While at first, Judy expresses her hatred for Chun-Li, we see that she knows that Chun-Li is right. 
Judy then sets off back to Naishal, continuing her investigation on JP and the Shadowloo Uprising. During the events of World Tour, Judy meets the most important person in her journey of healing. That person being... You. In World Tour, you set off on a journey searching for the meaning of strength and what it is, and what that means to you. During your journey, you are in chase of your friend Bosch, Luke's student. While in your search, you find out that Bosch had stolen an important belonging to the gang Madgear. Bosch gets away and makes for London to meet a mysterious group at a drop-off location. However, unfortunately for Bosch, not only do you find him, but so does Judy. It turns out that Judy was hired by Madgear to find Bosch and retrieve what he had stolen from the group. During this confrontation, you come to Bosch's side and stand up for him and the both of you take Judy on. Unfortunately for you, however, you lose the 2v1 and Judy comes out on top. As Judy insinuates the possibility of killing you, Bosch begs Judy to spare your life. This interaction is important as it reminds Judy of Cami and DiCaprio. Judy was once in the shoes of the player, defending Cami and DiCaprio from Vega. Now with the script being flipped, Judy, having been in your shoes before, respects this and does something she hasn't ever done. Spare an innocent's life. This is a huge stepping stone in her character development. Sure, we've seen that she doesn't kill her opponents in Street Fighter V, but that is because she had either been stopped or the opponents simply got away. But here, there is no stopping Judy but Judy herself. Judy made a choice out of the kindness in her heart, something that she hadn't done before. Not since saving Cammy, that is. Later in the story, we find Judy in Naishal recognizing who you are. She agrees to sparring with you, and after showing promise in replicating her Taekwondo, Judy expresses interest in you and proclaims that you now have her attention. As you train with Judy, she begins to open up more and more to you, telling you about her life from childhood to now. We even get to see some things with her in Sea Viper during the events of Street Fighter 4 and after Street Fighter 4. She even eventually takes your number. Even through these texts, we see Judy struggle to socialize with you. She goes from attempting to scam you to actually wanting to be your friend. Through you, Judy has learned how to open her heart up to others, which is something she's never done. You've shown Judy what friendship is, and with that taught her a valuable lesson. She doesn't have to be alone. You were the final piece to the puzzle, the last bit of driving force to push her to return to the light. 